Welcome to our review on cell structures. So the first thing we actually need to understand is that when we're talking about cells, they come in two types. So we've either got prokaryotic cells, which are bacterial cells, or we've got eukaryotic cells, which are plant and animal cells. Now, one of the kinds of questions they could ask you about on the exam here is to compare the differences between the prokaryotic and eukaryotic cells. So the first difference that we find is that in a prokaryotic cell, there is no nucleus. The DNA is just free floating. Whereas in a eukaryotic cell, we have the nucleus that contains the genetic material. If we then compare the actual complexity of those cells, what we find is prokaryotic cells are relatively simple, whereas eukaryotic cells are more complex. And then the last comparison we'd make is to do with their sizes. So a prokaryotic cell is between one micrometer to 10 micrometers, whereas the eukaryotic cells are bigger, being 10 micrometers to 100 micrometers. And just remember that when we're talking about a micrometer, then if we think about how this actually compares to a number we're more familiar with in terms of a millimeter, then one millimeter is the same as 1000 micrometers. So even when we're talking about eukaryotic cells being quite big, in the grand scheme of things, they're very tiny still. So we now need to understand the different structures that we find within the different types of cell. So the first one we need to look at are animal cells. Now, this should be rather familiar to you from key stage three. Your animal cell is typically like the fried egg shape. So you've got the actual nucleus in the middle there, that greenish color bit in this diagram. You've got the pink blobs there, which are the mitochondria. The cytoplasm obviously is the jelly-like substance. And then surrounding that, we have the cell membrane. Now, do remember to be really careful not to write down cell wall anytime we're talking about an animal cell. It's always the cell membrane. Second type of cell we need to know about are plant cells. And again, this is something you should have done back in key stage three. So slightly more complex than our animal cells in terms of what we need to know for our exam. We still have some of those same features as we saw in our animal cell. So we have the nucleus still, you've got the cytoplasm, we've also got the mitochondria there, and the cell membrane, which is the inner line around the outside. However, we also have additional cell structures there. So we've got the vacuole, which is a thing that fills up a lot of the inside there. We also have those green structures, which are the chloroplasts. And then finally, the outermost line around our diagram there is representing the cell wall, which is made of cellulose in our plant cells. The final type of cell we need to know about are the prokaryotic cells, so the bacterial cells. Now, this is a very different diagram to the other ones we've seen, because obviously we've gone from eukaryotic cells with the animal and plants to the prokaryotic cells here with our bacteria. Now, what we will find is if we look at the actual structures that we find, there are four that you can see are underlined there in red. Now, those are the ones that are present in all prokaryotic cells. So they will all have genetic material, which is usually found as this big loop of DNA. They all have the cytoplasm, the cell membrane and the cell wall. But in other bacterial cells, they have some additional features, but these aren't present in all bacterial cells. So we've got the flagella off the right hand side there, which act like a tail. You've got the plasmids, which are small loops again of genetic material. You've got the pili, which are actually little tiny hair like projections there on the outermost surface and the slime capsule, which goes around the outside of our cell wall. So you need to make sure that you can identify and label all three of those types of cells with those key features. So if we take a little bit longer to think about these prokaryotic cells, then first and foremost, we need to remember that bacteria are unicellular. So that means that they're only made of a single cell. So these are actually the smallest living things that we've got on planet Earth because they're single celled. You can't get smaller than that. And they are classed as living things because they carry out those seven life processes that hopefully you remember from key stage three there. Another part of this is we do need to know some examples of prokaryotic cells. So there's three on the right hand side there that are quite common types of bacteria. So you've got Streptomyces, Streptococcus and Escherichia coli or E. coli, the one that causes all that lovely food poisoning. 
So those three are common examples of bacterial cells. And you can see from the diagrams that I've given you there of the actual bacteria themselves, they all have very different structures. So they're different shapes. They've obviously got different structures around the outside. So the next thing we really need to know about are where these subcellular structures are found and also what they actually do or what their function is. So on the next couple of slides, what we've got are some tables that take you through the key bits. So we're going to start off with the nucleus, which hopefully we remember from key stage three is all to do with controlling the cell. And that's the bit that contains the genetic material. So that's what we're going to find in both of our eukaryotic cells. So plant cells and animal cells, but will not be found in a prokaryotic cells because they have no nucleus. The cytoplasm, which is the site of our chemical reactions, is found in all three types of cells there. The cell membrane, which will control what enters and leaves the cell because it's what's called a partially permeable or selectively permeable membrane, then that's present in all three of our cells there. And another thing that it also has are these things called receptor molecules, which are all to do with communication between cells, and they're actually embedded on the surface of our cell membrane. Our fourth subcellular structure or organelle are the mitochondria. Now, these ones contain enzymes for respiration, and they're also therefore the site that respiration occurs. And you'll find those in both plant and animal cells. The cell wall, which is made of cellulose in our plants or peptidoglycan in our prokaryotes. So do go careful not to mix up the material that the cell wall is made from and do make sure you know how to spell peptidoglycan because they were picky on that on previous questions I've seen. Now, what we'll find is that the cell wall's whole function is to do with supporting the cell so that obviously plants can grow without a skeleton, but it's not found in animal cells. The chloroplast is next, and that contains this green pigment called chlorophyll, which has got the whole purpose of trapping that light energy from the sun in order to carry out photosynthesis. So that's only found in plant cells. Last one on this one, the vacuole. This contains a substance called cell sap. And again, this is all to do with helping support the plant because as it takes in water, it pushes out against the cell wall and gives it that rigid structure. So only found in plant cells for that one. Our next subcellular structure then is the free genetic material. So this is typically a circular strand of DNA that's found in the cytoplasm, which then contains the genes required for all of those basic proteins to be made. So this is only found in our prokaryotic cells because both plant and animal cells have a nucleus that contains the genetic material. The flagella comes next, and that's all to do with allowing the cell to move. So basically it will spin and allow that cell to move through a fluid environment. And that again is only found in our prokaryotic cells. Third one is our pili. So these are those little tiny hair-like projections on the outermost surface. And their whole function is to do with allowing that cell to attach to surfaces and also to other cells. And when they've connected onto other cells, they actually use the pili to transfer genetic material between the two bacterial cells there. Again, only found in our prokaryotic cells. Slime capsule comes next, and this is all to do with protection. So by having a slime capsule around the outside, it's actually going to protect the cell and stop it from drying out. But it also helps it to stick onto smooth surfaces as well. And again, only found in our prokaryotic cells there. The last one, the plasmid, this is a circular piece of DNA and it contains additional genes. So these aren't the genes it needs just to survive. These are additional ones. And usually you'll find things like antibiotic resistance, for example, are found on these little plasmids. Now, the good thing about those plasmids, as far as bacteria are concerned, is they can be transferred from one to another. So that's how that bacterial resistance is able to spread. So what we find, again, only found in prokaryotic cells, not in any of the eukaryotic cells.